better. All right, whatever. I'm shooting for a <laughs> cat. I'm just saying. All right, everyone shut up for a minute. All right, everyone, this is going to be a different kind of episode. We had all these guys back here. Come join us, fellow. Where's Sean? There's Sean. There's Sean. There's Sean. Come on. I'm here. There we go. Fellow podcasters and a YouTuber with Sean oh. back there. <laughs> the one person who actually knows how to play guitar, Sean. And, <laughs> he and, said it, not me. And, <laughs> and what we've done. to try here. <laughs> is we've, we have everyone pair off and do their own uh, Craigslist and Reverb and eBay ads. And uh, we're gonna all like put them all together as like an anthology, and we're having people call in and send us their files, people who couldn't be here. Um, so it's and just we had tacos, and we had tacos, tacos. yeah, and tacos, and beer. And beer. yeah. <laughs> so it's just gonna be a great thing. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> it's just going to be a great big celebration of our 300th episode. Woo! Yes, boys. Woo! So, congratulations. Thanks, everyone. And thanks to everyone in the community who could be here and contribute to this. So, and thanks to Henry. Cheers. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> One. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's going on, everybody? I'm Sean Pierce Johnson from Stomp Fox Saturday. And I'm Co Schneider of the Flippin' Flippers podcast. And for some reason, Ryan and Steve didn't feel like doing work for their 300th episode, so that's why we're here. Well, why would they? I don't know. Yeah. Well, they made it this far. Now they're big time. You know, they got they got legit sponsors and everything. It's true. Uh, they they have manscaping sponsors. Manscaping sponsors. I'm thinking about trying that for Nam this year. Honestly, I was looking at it before, and now I'm uh, more likely to buy it. I think so. Well, I guess we're uh, we're gonna do an ad that they normally do here. Yeah. And so uh, I I picked this one. Yes, you did. <laughs> because this is the, for some reason this guitar actually holds a, a weird place in my heart. Um, I remember when this guitar came out. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing this guitar in my childhood hometown guitar center, and I remember picking up this guitar and playing it and thinking to myself, at the age of fourteen. Who the hell is this for? <laughs> Keep in mind, fourteen-year-old boy here. It's the uh, it's the BC Rich Butt Bitch. Is that really what it's called? It's literally called the Bitch. Well, I know that, but is it called the Butt? Well, is that the Butt I part mean, added on there? The Butt part is literally painted on there. This oh, it's actually I did not see that before agreeing to be a part of this ad with you. I did not notice the paint job. It is literally a woman's behind <sighs> in a thong. On the face of the guitar. Oh my goodness. Now all things today aside, let's go in the way back machine and actually think about how ridiculous it was even 12, 13, 15 years ago. Oh yeah. Even as a teenager and you know, a punk rock band, there's no way, no way, no way I would uh, touch that. And BC riches are meant for guys who do metal. Y- yeah. I and I, so. I can't even imagine a metal guy actually wanting to play this guitar. No. No, no, no. How much are they asking for this thing? How much are they asking for this thing? It looks like two sixty nine. Well, at least that's fair. I mean, at least they're not asking an, an absorbent amount for something so stupid. Yes, I am surprised yeah. it's being listed in such a red state, though. Yeah, that is very. No, maybe it's not surprising. I don't know. I don't get into politics on my, on my show, so I'm just. We don't not, either. I don't know why even, I did even, just now. Not even gonna <laughs> touch that. All right. Um. So <laughs> it was basically part of the BC Rich body art collection. Now that doesn't Gosh. mean the body part. That it was a it was a year long series. Okay. Where they every month they released a new guitar with a different like special artwork, and this happened to be. I'm pretty sure I haven't checked this before. I might check it after we finish this. Mm-hmm. I think this was the guitar that was released for November. And the only reason that's significant is to me is that was the month of my birthday. Okay. So I was like always wondering throughout that year, like, Oh, I wonder what the, what the BC rich art guitar is going to be. <laughs> and it's the one with the butt. So every, was it every month there was a different body part painted yeah. on the guitar? Yeah. Every month they huh. had, a, it was a different guitar and it was a different, piece of art and i think they did a few mockingbirds and and uh warlocks they may have even done a gunslinger i actually don't know it's been years but i mean 269 is like that's the that's the right price but it's like how 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 big of balls do you have to have to pull that off 
Yeah, I mean, the, the only, in today's climate, <laughs> I believe that the only way to negotiate that is you are refinishing it if you buy it. Yeah. I don't know that there's any situation that you will not get torn up for playing that guitar. Rightly so. Yeah, Rightly absolutely. So. It is, it's one of those things like looking at it with the benefit of hindsight even back then, it was kind of weird. It was a little tasteless. It was a little tasteless. Yeah. I mean, granted, we were at a very different place and time in, in American culture, in guitar <laughs> culture, where it was like that kind of holdout from the musical heyday definitely had like its moments. Whoa, easy there. <laughs> Sorry. Brand new microphones. We're the first yes. to use these brand new Lewitt microphones, everybody. Um, it still was like... I think I picked it up in the guitar center just out of the sense of like, it's like those Schecters with the stripper inlays. <laughs> you got to pick it up to just at least say you tried it and you at least played it once. I, I don't know. Like even like one of my favorite acoustics that I've picked up in guitar center in a long time has been the, uh, the Tim Armstrong fender. Okay. And even that, like it has like cat inlays or whatever. And yeah. it's just, that's too much for me. <laughs> Even that's too much for me. So this is way too far, <laughs> way too far. Ironically, because guitar tastes are rather conservative. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But you know, for like, it's an import guitar. Like okay, two, so two sixty nine. Like you said, if you wanted to refinish it, you probably could. But I mean, you you seem a little more in tune with the BC Rich stuff. What are those? If it's not that special paint job or finish, what do those normally go for? I mean, BC riches haven't been worth much in maybe a decade. Yeah. Because th their custom shop kind of was just shuttered and their heyday is gone. But they are under new ownership. And I hear that the there's a groundswell for a, a bit of a comeback. And it's going to be pretty mind-blowing when people actually get to hold their new production stuff but i have held one of their old school uh, like custom shop ones okay i feel like my mic is going down i'm not used <laughs> to being on video so i'm like nervous to touch things <laughs> i'll tighten it thank you i'm ruining the rule of thirds that's all right we're okay okay brian will forgive us yeah I hope now so. nobody has to look at my face either which is good <laughs> um yeah and i i played a, a a custom shop one i think from late 80s would that okay. be about right yeah and it despite the fact that it was very pointy and extreme, yes. it was a very comfortable guitar and seemed really cool. BC Rich to me exemplifies like 70s and 80s rock and roll excess. Yeah. Like the at the time, like especially we had guys like Alembic like doing work mm -hmm. for the Grateful Dead and you see Jerry Garcia's guitars and it's just like all over the place. It's all these different switches and all these what have yous. Yeah. BC rich was kind of along that same line of like, Hey, we have these guitars. We put a bunch of switches. We put a bunch of options. It's like top of the pops kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but over the course of, I would say the last 10 to 15 years, that image has definitely gone down and down woo, and down. Woo, 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 woo. Is it, there's probably a button that does that. <laughs> that one or that one. It's definitely not that this one, button. That one, that one. Oh, I heard, I heard, we're messing with the broadcast here, <laughs> which I actually am having fun with. <laughs> we totally hijacked the show. We totally ruined the show. There we go. Yeah. I know that button is the money sound. Yeah, because it's green. All we're doing is we're just, we're creating dollars here. Yep. All right. All right. So, uh, lesson learned. Uh, don't buy butt guitars. Right. Um, and don't let strange YouTubers and podcasters hijack your show. <laughs> indeed so uh yeah i'm co from the flipping flippers i'm i'm sean from stomp box saturday and we're gonna go drink beer and eat tacos i think so all right all right bye everyone should i press a button Hello, this is Guitar Nerds. 
the world's number one the guitar podcast celebrating <laughs> <laughs> celebrating 60 cycle hums 300th episode that is an entire 60 episodes more than you chickened hums. out of saying it properly <laughs> didn't you <laughs> I totally, said it quickly. Totally totally like, it out say quickly. Say. You say they've done 60 more episodes, but well. you think 100 is gack. Plus, we do the Patreon. Plus, we've done live episodes. They do. They plus, do we've done Branton's Rant On. Plus, yeah. we've done that. Right. Yeah, yes. we're definitely ahead. We, we do probably, yeah, there's, there's more episodes. There was, yeah, there was the gack podcast. Then there was the all new gack podcast. Yeah, we don't forget about that you. one. That was like, <laughs> that was uh, terrible. that's like the, uh, <laughs> it's like the new adventures of He Man. Oh, Have you yeah. seen that? Where no. it's like, it's, it's, is it's that like, where He Man went? His clothes. He's in space. Oh, oh no, <laughs> yeah. that's terrible. Yeah, yeah. The novelty of us is definitely interested. worn off, though. Yeah, I'm only interested in He Man when he's wearing pants and that sort of like chest. The piece. vest. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he did wear clothes in the original series when he was Prince Adam. When he was Prince Adam, he wore the 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 pink get up. Yeah, How yeah. do you people know so much about He Man? I've uh, read a lot about He Man. Oh no, I, I know just... that you had like all 150 episodes or something. No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh. That's the thing. You couldn't get them on DVD. There was too many. Oh, there, oh I, you... yeah, I actually just follow the Grumpy Skeletor on uh, Facebook. That, uh, and... The fact that you follow things on Facebook <laughs> is like, it's like, all right, granddad. <laughs> Are you posting memes about the economy as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I, I do Joe sometimes. Joe Brexit post- memes Branton is what <laughs> who, me. Yeah, who, that's how I roll. Who out of the four of us was the first one to meet someone to be from born. Fi- Sixty Cycle Hum? Ah, uh, who, who? I don't remember meeting any any of them. No, any, I mean, any of them. Any of them. Yeah. I think it might have been me at Winter Nam. Yeah, I think it probably was you. Which Winter Nam? Uh, Twenty seventeen. Mm, I wasn't there. Okay. Which is the one that we went to? 2018? No, we went 2017. Did we? No, we went 2018. No, you guys went 2018. I went 2019. And I'm going again this year. My flights just got booked. Oh, really? Yeah, very excited. Very excited. I'm going to try and avoid them at all costs. Got to be honest with you. Absolutely, absolutely. One of the only times I met them was when I drank two pints of uh, shots. That was a a terrible time. The tequila sunrise. Yeah, let's not talk about that anyway. That's That's uh, why I had to carry you home in a sort of crucifix style. Yeah, yeah. uh, Yeah, it was great fun. Glad you got your life under control. You're, you're much nicer now than you were then. Thanks, man. Good job, don't, don't drive. Yeah, <laughs> it is a good job. I don't. Drive. I sort of prefer to them because he'd, he'd drink like he's annoying up to a point, and then after that, didn't really say very much, and well, that was better. That's the golden hour. Also, when Joe's around other people, he uh, and he's drinking, he tries to impress other people. So generally, we get left alone. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, fantastic. Which is good. Yeah. He reaches yeah. that certain point and then goes, "Oh no, I see these people all the time. Let's I go would, and try and find other people to impress." I was yeah. really trying to impress Ryan. Actually, yeah, he's hot so yeah, i was trying to so hot right now <laughs> he's so, an excellent so taste right in shirts no, we, no 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 come on terrible taste in shirts, shirts. Taste in cannot, shirts. Cannot give him that. terrible taste in guitars but a great taste in <laughs> shirts <laughs> we're supposed to be doing an ad for this we thing are we are gonna do an ad for them yeah we're gonna do an ad for them it'll be absolutely fine i don't know like a, you know whenever whenever 60 cycle i'm doing ads obviously people send in these these weird products and it's weird to try and find a product it, well, it's hard to try and find a product that is worse than Ryan's taste in guitars. <laughs> so I was just like, I like how do the, we do I it? like that we, we just made the same joke again. That's yeah, good. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I was yeah. kind of, yeah, I was doubling and up. And we kind of supported yeah. it. Yeah. Double down on the that one that one, we've yeah. picked, I wouldn't say is worse. It's just different. Oh, what are you talking about? So this is the thing. We were talking about what ad are we going to do? And I was like, well, I don't want to do, I don't want to do something that I dislike. I don't want to take the mick out of someone's listing online. So exactly. instead, we have found straight up the best thing you can currently (laughs) buy on any platform where you buy things marketplace is the word you're looking for marketplace yes international internet market this thing looks like a handheld vacuum cleaner it It does it looks like something that i'd keep in the glove box well, of yeah. the car. <laughs> I guess it really it does. does. Yeah, yeah. I guess it does. And what we're talking about, of course, is the course. new Dyson. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, this is the Yamaha G10 and G10C. So this is available on eBay.co.uk. Other, no, I'm sorry, other platforms the, are available. I don't think they are. They are. I mean, yes. Yeah, so I don't know if this is available on those other platforms. So this what? is this is a Yamaha G10 and G10C what MIDI it? guitar synth system. So 
explain what this is, Joe, because I'm looking at it and I still don't really understand. Well, the G10 is the synth guitar and the G10C is the 2U rack mountable control to me. for that. No, it, well, no? You're, you're, sort of, you're sort of correct. It's a MIDI controller, basically. So the guitar does nothing but send notes data down a seven pin cable to the other half, which is the rack unit, which converts that data to MIDI. And then that data has to go to a MIDI sound module to then transmit that data into a sound. Wait, so I um, still so need I still need some sort of synthesizer unit to Yeah, as, as far as I, I so I've been reading the manual, which is one of my favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as far as I can tell, the actual so the listing on on eBay at the moment comes with the G10C MIDI Brain, and I don't think the MIDI Brain actually has any sounds or has a limited set of something inside of it. But I don't think it really does a whole lot. Well, so what in that case, this is very different from the Roland GR300, which which of course yeah, came the, with the, the GR, well the the GR series, the original ones were were actual guitar synths. They were synthesizers that were triggered via the amplitude of hitting a guitar string. And they had they yeah. had floor controllers which allowed you to set the sounds, but the but the actual the, the brains of it were well, built yeah, in. If you look at the GR three hundred, that is actually a synthesizer. It's just the, the fact that you're triggering the synth sound from from a guitar, basically. But Roland have done a box like this before, haven't they? Was it called like the GI fifty or something that was just yeah. The GI50 was a MIDI converter. Which is so, yeah, what this is, yeah. Which effectively what this is. So, yeah, yeah it takes the GK cable. Um, so, GK, which is the, the Roland system, is six mini humbuckers or hex pickups that convert um, string data to, um, to MIDI, basically. And this uses a very, very similar thing. However, I can't imagine it's particularly nice to play because you can only string it up with plain... 16 gauge strings. Oh. <laughs> Wait, you have to put strings on this? Oh, I thought this worked like those uh like... It's not a, it's not like the Casio. It's oh, not I like, thought the, it was like the Casio with the rubber strings. Oh. Where no, do you, you even to... where do you even buy six 16 gauge <laughs> strings? Well, usually you go into a store like Gak and go, have you got any plain 16s? And we go, <laughs> nah. No, oh, no, no, mate. <laughs> oh, can you order some in? <laughs> nah. No. <laughs> Wait, so there, let, let's be let's be clear about this. Let's be clear about this. It's not a pack of sixteen gauge strings. It's six individual gauge yeah, so let strings. Me, um, let me pull up the um, the manual here. Can you? Um, the G10 guitar MIDI controller will only function properly when strung with specified strings. 0.16 gauge plain non wound guitar strings. Um, Does it yeah. matter what brand? Uh, it does not stay. Okay, that's, that's they've, good. They've got to be Yamaha strings, right? But there's, oh, no. there's a trem system on the G10. There is a trem arm. Yeah, on oh, this. What you've for people listening, it, what it looks like is well, this is to, actually a big part of the sixty circle hum ads. They go into great lengths yeah, to yeah. describe the, the what it looks like. I don't feel we've done that yet. So, so I would say three things that it looks like. Okay, firstly, we've said it looks like a uh, the body of it looks like a handheld vacuum cleaner. I'd say yes, that's one good description. You can yes. use your imagination to meld it out of these three things um second thing it looks like is i'd imagine if in some sort of like 80s sci-fi film yeah they were like what we need is someone to be playing something that looks like uh bagpipes from the future that right. what i would say was yeah. this this or, is this is an instrument from highlander 2 oh yeah or it could be like um, has it, uh, if you've played that game Horizon Zero Dawn on PS4 it's basically animals have sort of come together out of bits of in no, the future I don't know computer animals have sort of come together I, mean, I can tell um, and yeah animals sort of come together from like bits of rubbish like right. tech and they kind of formed right. this looks like at like like a newspaper and banana peel raccoon uh, no it's more like you know bits of old cars or like tellies and that oh, have come together this looks like uh the that universe is equivalent of like an armadillo but it's kind of like <laughs> formed out of like bits of old bins and yeah. like old hair dryers it's, but it's um, headless though which is cool <laughs> it's, it's worth pointing out a couple of other interesting bits here so the strings so not only do you have to put 16 gauge on it you have to tune them up to f um <laughs> wait what and they all have to be tuned to the same pitch. Yeah. Um, but how do you tune them? 
there there are tuners on the on the bottom, so you can yeah, tune no, the no, string and, tension. Yeah, on but there. but how do you? They're all tuned to F. I know that, but how would you normally tune something? With a you, tuner. Have, with a tuner. You have, to, you have to do it with a mic. Bear in mind, we're talking in the 80s here, so you would have probably used a Boss TU-12 a needle tuner with a microphone. Wow. Um, and Un- unless yeah. there's... Is there anything in the oh, brain built box? Built into the that, MIDI system, uh, yeah. potentially. The MIDI system uh, looks like an old VCR. It looks yeah, like... Yeah, and actually, interestingly enough, it takes a cassette. Um, <laughs> it takes a cartridge, which you can load sounds into. Wow. Um, <laughs> this is getting better and but, better. Better. The coolest bit is, um, don't forget, if you buy your G10 guitar MIDI controller, if you happen to also own a Yamaha BC1 breath controller, you can also plug that in as well, allowing breathing, oh, breathing and tonguing techniques. <laughs> 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 the various voices. So you can use your tongue to control things like right. pitch. Is this no, like, I don't understand. Vile. I don't understand. Wait, can you only do that if you're sober? <laughs> yeah. All I'm saying how is... Do, how does the breathalyzer work? What does it define as being sober? What, which Is it European, English or American limits? All I'm saying is, if you own either of these instruments, you're not getting to use any tongue in technique <laughs> anytime soon. So, uh, so here we are. So I, uh, I, I agree with that statement, and I especially love the tagline that this listing has gone for. So Yamaha G10 and G10C MIDI guitar synth system condition used. Tagline, the coolest and probably the most successful guitar synth ever made is the Yamata- Yamaha G10 from Yamaha. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, this actually goes up. There's another bit further on that goes on to say, complete with the G10C module. No, no do the voice. <clears throat> complete with the G10C module. It isn't a sound module. <laughs> Case and cable. I'm not going to do the voice. Okay. Uh, not to it mention, didn't sound like it was hurting you. To not to voice. mention the fabulous vibe from the 80s in general. This looks good. Even just hanging on the wall. But How would you is, hang course, it on the wall? Yeah, there's no, there's there's, no headstock. There's no headstock. So, what are you going to do? Hammer it in? It's, it's, also <laughs> worth, it's also worth Googling the Yamaha BC1 breath controller, which looks like a chrome dummy. Um, <laughs> I guess you would say in America. Um, uh, pacifier, yeah. Pacifier, yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, it was originally a breath controller for the DX7 series of FM synthesizers. But yeah, you can plug that into the guitar and use various tonguing or breathing controls to control things like pitch. <laughs> I'm looking at pictures uh, of this now and this looks like one of the worst things ever made. Absolutely, absolutely the more amazing. About it, the more I'm like, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I, I think um, that is... Just the, before we disappear, yeah. I, I want to point out, Joe, I'm not sure if you've seen this, but another one of the pictures on the eBay listing here uh-huh. has what appears to be an advert from the 80s. And as of most adverts from the 80s, it's mainly just words. Uh, but it does say on here, guitar, the, the, the little description is, guitar players are now free to enjoy one of life's most basic pleasures. Absolute power. <laughs> 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 that's a basic pleasure yeah 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 just wow. yeah yeah one of one of life's most basic pleasures i mean know? the tagline for that very advert is now guitarists can control the world yeah i i just i wonder what sort of um you know idyllic utopia that the uh yamaha engineers were considering we would be living in uh yeah. 40 years into the future yeah. 30 yeah, is... 40 years into the future when they made this guitar you know yeah also, the nature. I'm of sorry the- that we let you down. Is all I can say. Yeah. Well, you let us down, actually. Let's be honest. Well, anyway, so, anyway, it's uh, it's it's available here in the UK for 890 pounds on a buy it now on eBay. Thoroughly worth investing. Unfortunately, you can't palm mute at all. I've also noticed because of the nature of the bridge. But but whatever. Anyway, there's plenty of tonguing techniques to be How done. How much is that? That's uh, uh, 1100 dollars. 1100 dollars. Oh, yeah. We're doing okay at the moment then. Yeah, yeah, things are all right things at the moment. Things are back yeah, up yeah. a little bit. Oh, Depending on when this podcast get released, it might change. Yeah, but. it probably will. It does all the time. Anyway, yes, this uh, was well, an absolutely fantastic instrument. Thoroughly worth the 1100 uh, US dollars you can get. And well, that's it from us. Enjoy the rest of uh, of this 300th episode of, um, of 60s. Of 60s? Yeah. Of 60s, 60s cycling like, hum. and humming. Patreon.com forward slash guitar nerds. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, uh. I don't know if it's 
not based on a tube screamer, but I don't know what it is. It's supposed to be based on. Oh! Holy smokes! Dang! That's pretty nice. Move it in. It's quick, it's really fast. Move it in. So why don't you introduce this? Because I have not seen it. I don't even. All right. Good luck, guys. I've been drinking. All right. Thank Make you. Make it fun. Make it funny. Look at that. Look is at that this us? thing. That's us. That is something. That is something. So that's why I just. Because I think there's another picture. Oh, yeah. See, it's like completely carved. Anyways. Yeah. Hey, guys. I'm Aaron from the Gear Slum. I'm RJ from Teletalks and Just Surprise Me, the podcast. The podcast. The podcast. I'm from the Gear Slum the podcast the and podcast. et cetera et and et cetera. I think this is the first, our first interaction. So, you know, we're feeling it out. We're feeling good though. I think, right. It's a little steamy in here. It is like my, my glasses are just, terrible. our glasses are fogging up. <laughs> Anyways, there's so been a lot of uh dude on dude action in here in the last few, it's the best. like hour or so. Mm, and with these, you know, just so we walked these... into a really sweaty room. Mm. Are we on the camera too? Hey, camera. Yeah. Hey, YouTube. You got the monitor down there. Hey, he's... there we are. Ryan's got a full on setup. Like he's professional. <laughs> All right, let's see this ad. We're going to do an ad. We're going to talk about we it. We are going to do an ad. 60 cycle hum style. It is a custom carved electric guitar. This guitar is a bit of a Frankenstein, but one of a kind. That is for sure. <laughs> I don't honestly know how uh, much about it. Carlo Deluxe neck, I believe a... Sh Wait, I don't think this is the right thing. <laughs> no. I think it has to be. But yeah, why, is it saying, why is it saying Strat? Oh, no, SG buddy. I'm sorry. I'm drunk. Are you drunk? The neck is a Strat. It says Carlo Deluxe oh, neck, I believe okay. a Strat. This dude has That's no what... punctuation. So Carlo Deluxe neck, I believe a Strat. <laughs> yeah. Japan made wood body, or as someone mentioned to me, a SG body, though I'm not certain, custom carved. It is definitely custom car. It plays well. The pickup covers need a good cleaning. <laughs> There's some oxidation on them. Not affecting tone. Comes with hard shell case. If anyone is interested, <laughs> let me know. Nice show piece, if anything. For $325. I'm going to tell you one thing right out the gate. That is not a nice show piece. <laughs> uh, I mean, like... <laughs> You can't tell me Danzig wouldn't get on in on this. Like Dan, Glenn Danzig would uh, yeah, be like, maybe. "I'm gonna put this up. This is this is inspirational." Um, so explain it. So what it is basically is an SG carved out with a bunch of holes in it. Not holes, but like no, negative just, space. Yeah. So it's like a demon girl, naked demon girl. I believe the description surfing is surfing on like what devil. I would describe as a wave of blood. Is that what that is? Yeah, yeah she's surfing that, that on like a wave, of, wave blood. of blood. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> um, she has no clothes on. Um, yep. It also has like this violin carve around the the kind of belly contour areas. Mm -hmm. The more I look at it, the less I hate it. To be honest, but I still hate it. It's what's impressive to me is or this, that, has, that must be the wrong description because nothing about this is strat. Nothing. But it does say SG. This ad is all over the place. Well, my thing is, where did <laughs> he get the body? If it's if it's a strat neck, which it's not, because it's got three and three. Um, where did he get it from? Is this like yeah? Is it a bolt on neck? Did they literally? Because the saddest thing about this, what's is going to make it terrible, is the fact that this was an actual Gibson SG. Can you see the headstock? Uh, not really, but like, let's see. No. Yeah, you can't you see can't like see. what's on he it. Just, he's <laughs> only focusing on the beautiful artwork. Be but it is beautiful. Like, let's see. That's 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 as good as we're gonna get. <sighs> it Even, might be a Gibson. <laughs> it might. To be honest. If it's a Gibson and somebody did that, <laughs> man, I I feel. But do you know that any, I don't know, guitar. I don't know enough about Gibson to know if there are any SGs with like a bound headstock like that. My YouTube channel's Teletalks. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so who knows? Could be, so, could not be. Yeah. And then look at, look at the, the tail piece though. It is just hanging on by a thread on this side. Yeah. That's wild. Like, doesn't that affect the tone, the sustain, bro? I mean, I'd be more worried about it just falling apart. 
to be yeah. honest. <laughs> yeah. There's probably like a, I wouldn't even, because the post has got to go into it. So there can't be that much wood holding it in there. There, yeah. there really can't. So I will say as much as I hate the artwork, it's not terribly done. No, it's not terrible. I mean, the, it's just tacky. The, it's tacky, and like the the physiological proportions are definitely way off. Like no one's waist is that small. Yeah, uh, like hashtag, elbow width. <laughs> it's like the same size as the elbow. It actually, I think her arms thicker. Yeah, maybe. Like, I, I really do think her arms. Her thicker. hand is like <laughs> long. Her fingers are longer than her forearm. You know, it's what, a mess. Just this is completely. But random. it's a demon, so you know, demons are. You know, what it reminds me of is. I don't know. You may not be this nerdy. You ever play a game called Starcraft? I've, I'm familiar that it exists. I've never okay. played it. So there's a, I think her name's Kara. She's like a turn, a, a Terran, so earthling, but she gets infested with the alien. She like grows wings just like this. It, it looks, it, it looks a lot like sounds, that. sounds really cool. I will say what you're describing sounds this really good. Not though. Also, can we comment on the pick guard? The, the custom little wings? <laughs> See, that's I don't one know. part that I kind of like. The scalloped little pick guard. That's, I think that's kind of groovy. To, to be each, honest. To each his own. But also, the reason why this may not be a Gibson is looking at this picture, I don't think those horns are even. I don't think Gibson horns are even. I think... Oh shit! I'm looking at Gibson right behind you, and so, they're not. Uh, let me give you some. Let me drop some wisdom on you, folks. Okay, this fair is enough. A common misperception. Everyone thinks that Gibson SG horns are like parallel and even, but they're not. They're not because I'm looking at one right behind yeah, you. No, the top one is definitely longer than the bottom one. See, see right there, guys. Look at past his head, and well, now you just covered it up. There oh, you go. Right here. Yes. Well, you can't see the other horns, so it doesn't this matter. Guy here. But can you grab that thing? Yeah, they are definitely not even. And that's kind of mind blowing. Shows yeah. you what I know about Gibson. I, I only do tellies, guys. I, I don't know what to tell you. But according to Steve, that is the telly of Gibson. All right, so let me ask you this. Okay. If this was available, how much, first of all, would you ever buy it? And how much would you be willing to pay for it? I would it's never, listed at 325 I, Yeah, it's 325 I probably could not. I don't know. Maybe I could part with it for, or I could, I could get it for like 80 bucks, 80 tops, 80? <laughs> tops 100. What if it is a Gibson and it plays like a Gibson? That could be a crazy. bad thing if you ask some people like good Gibson or bad Gibson. Like imagine, but it doesn't matter. Imagine it's like Gibson quality with this crazy carve. And again, Gibson quality doesn't say, say much good gibson or bad well i mean it doesn't matter like any gibson's gonna play better than an 80 dollars okay so here's my thing i mainly play sitting down like you're doing right now and i think those violin cuts would make that really uncomfortable uh, they would dig into my leg yeah i got thick thighs man thick thighs i think it's a great church guitar and the price is <laughs> if it's a gibson if it's a gibson the price is not crazy no, if it's a Gibson, that's actually a pretty good deal. Actually, no, I take that back. Because how much wood do you think is missing from that Gibson because of the car? You were talking about like percentage of off, like <laughs> yeah. based on the missing wood. Exactly. <laughs> it may not be a good deal based on that. Because if it's just like, well, no, because it's got the pearlaid inlay. So it's not just like dot inlay. So what is that? That's that's a standard, right? It would have to be a standard, Yeah, probably. Right? I would pay like 200 for this, I think. I think 200 really? If I was like in the market for an SG and it sounded and played good because the artwork's like, it's terrible, but it's not terribly done. I don't know. It's really bad. I mean, if I'm going to, it's also a, really bad. Like, where could you play that? I mean, if you're in like a Danzig cover band, yeah, <laughs> which is not a bad idea. I would, there be you in, go. I would do that. Yeah. Uh... So let's do this pass or fail for this ad. Is this guitar ever going to sell for this price? No, no, absolutely not. The, no, the max I would go is like 150. I, I, I'm thinking the more I'm thinking about it, the max I would go is like 150. I think that's fair. You know, you get getting... so think about like if it's a Gibson, assuming it's Gibson, Gibson hardware, Gibson pickups. 
Also, how do you set this down? Like you have to keep it on the stage or on the wall or uh, in the case. Oh, it's or gotta on the be wall. hanging. Yeah. There's no way it could fit on like a standard and guitar then, stand. With this specific guitar, the last thing I'd be worrying about is head, like the, <laughs> the, the neck break. Yeah, yeah, because like that wing, her wing, that's going to be gone if you drop that. That's true. That's going to be just It's definitely gone. fragile. But if you have like a demon-themed room or something, this is not a bad piece of art for a demon theme. Also, especially like demon surfing. Where, if where, you're into Satan and surfing, Satan this is and like surfing? a really good guitar for you. Also, I mentioned how, like, if I was sitting down, it'd be a problem. Where's Where's the straps? Where Where Where's the straps? I think it's got to be like, like just on there. It's got to be on the, the back. Knobs, yeah, and then the standard one is always on the back of the neck. On the anyway. back, so you got two on the back this time. No, I think it's like still on the end, but like there's no. Cause look, look at that. Look oh, at that. The, what is the right there? You, no, that's just a mark. I'm telling you, you're not getting a strap. It looks like metal to me. I think it's a win. I don't know. I would slum it. 99% sure that this is an excellent guitar. Oh, it probably plays great. Just clean <laughs> it up, but it's just really weird. I The pickups are gross now I would, that I see the close-up. Yeah, I'd rather, <laughs> me personally, I'd rather just get an Epiphone SG, call it a day. If I really wanted yeah. an SG. I don't know. Something about it speaks to me. Okay. It's awful. But something about it, it reminds me of like, do you remember like in the 90s, there were those like, people would get like these shirts with like airbrushed demons on them. Yes. It's like, or like very like much that fairs. feel. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Like the demonic carny kind of. <laughs> okay. Traveling. Okay. This is the guitar. This is like the guitar that you would play if you were in the band that has the sexy sax man in Lost Boys. The sexy sax man. You remember that? Do you yes. remember, have you seen Lost Boys when they go yes, to the beach party and there's yeah. like the, the vampire band? Yeah, yeah, If you were yeah, yeah. in that band, you would play this guitar. Fair enough. I, you know what? We're, we're, we're going to take it home. You want to go half? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I have this idea. I have this idea for a band that only plays like um, cover songs of like pop divas. Okay. But it changes them to be like vampire themed. Okay. And give it's me called an example. The, it's called the De Vampires. The, the vampires? Yeah, like diva vampires. Okay, like okay, the D-vampires. Okay. okay. So, like, I will always love you, but mm -hmm. then it's just, like, about sucking blood or something. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, Yeah, guys, tell us what you think, I guess. This is a great for the D-vampires. Shout out. <laughs> uh, So, you want to give a little bit of shout out where you get where you're from? Yeah, hit where me up. The Gear Slum, at The Gear Slum. Facebook.com slash the gear slum, patreon.com slash the gear slum. There you go. Uh, the gear slum. YouTube Tele Talks and then on your favorite podcasting service, just surprise me where we talk pop co pop culture and any other garbage. So like the vampires. We would we could do a whole subject just on the de vampires for It's a great you know. idea. I also have the Zombie Beach Boys. Okay. There were some other ones. I had a mummy themed one, but I can't uh, remember it. I mean, how many of them are dead? The beach well, boys. no, it's Actual just like Beach, beach boy, boy songs, but like about zombie stuff. Okay. See, this sounds like, um, man, what was that guy? Like Zombie name? USA instead of Surfing USA. Okay. That's it's just about eating people alive. And this video is sponsored by Zombieland Double Tap. <laughs> Double Tap. <laughs> the American, yeah, the American uh, classic. All right. Well, that'll do it for us, folks. All right. Congrats See you guys. to Ryan and Steve, 300. Nothing episode 300 i it's amazing i was, I was there at, for the 100th episode did you and the 200th it? episode you were there at yeah. the 200 yeah at that tiger was my, tiger yes i was there it was a terrible experience for me oh well yeah why? they they closed out a tab somebody else's tab under my car no like 300 dollars no. worth <laughs> under my car and i had <laughs> like really a beer and like a charcuterie <laughs> board it was, that's really bad it was bad that sucks but, a lot of good memories. Anyways. Cheers. See you guys. Folks. Oh, what are you drinking, by the way? <laughs>